There's a letter for you from Germany. It's from my father. Better if you don't sit still. Give it a chance. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Hello, Vicky. I had a complaint from old Mrs. Cratchit. She had a letter delivered with a duck's footprint on it. Yes, really. Was it a webbed foot? I believe most ducks have them that way. You sure it was a duck? I'm happy to say when I delivered the mail, I never became an expert on muddy footprints. Did it have a limp? What do you mean? Well, it could have been a lame duck. <laughs> oh, um, wasn't a duck at all. It was a duckling. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll make sure it gets there. Thanks, Vicky. Daddy, can I have a piggyback? Oh, all right, lazy bones. Jump up. Oh. Ride a cock horse to Banbury Cross to see a fine lady upon a white horse. Will I go to heaven? Animals don't. Where do they go? Just to the bottom of the creek. Let's get on with it. What are you doing? None of your business. What are you doing to those puppies? They're ours, and we can do anything we want with them. You're not going to drown them. I won't let you. You're Vicky Denning, aren't you? Everyone says you're a stuck-up pommy. Everyone hates you. I'll take them. I'll give them a good home. They're ours. And if we want to drown them, you're not going to stop us. you like a nice bowl of warm milk? Hmm? Come on, beauty. this. Flour. Flour? Yeah, 
yes. Have you been carrying flour in the same bag as the King's Mail? No. Puppies. Oh. And I suppose the puppies put the flour in the mail bag. No, the puppies were put in the flour bag. Did you put the puppies in the flour bag? No, I put the puppies in the mail bag. I let them out of the flour bag. Go. The others put them in the flour bag. Go! I'm glad you sorted that out. The only agreement was that I was going to fence half our boundary and your husband was going to do the other half. Didn't he tell you? No, he didn't. Ah. Well, it doesn't really make any difference, though, cos I've honoured my part of the bargain. I expect the Dennings to do the same. After all, your husband was a man of his word. Yes. Yes, well, I'll look through Nigel's papers, Mr Coates. Good on you. I'd rather stay on friendly terms, Mrs Denning, wouldn't you? Doctor? I wonder why Nigel didn't mention it. Oh, no doubt he would have done in due course. They're absolutely splendid. <laughs> Jenny, look at them. Oh, yes. They're lovely. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. Now, don't get too fond of them, because you won't be keeping them. Oh! Oh, well, maybe just these two, but no more. I can't have the barn full of waifs and strays. I met the strangest man today, down by Swampy Creek. What was strange about him? I don't know. He was just odd. He had a scar here. Matt Saunders. Calling me Emily. That was the name of his daughter. It was? Yes. It happened before you came here. It was a great. Tra tragically? Tragedy. Yes, tragedy. He was a laborer doing small jobs. He wanted to buy his own place up in the valley. One night he came home, his house was on fire. Wife and child got burned to death. He tried to save him, but when he... Oh, well, that's how he got the scar. Now he just wanders around here and there, sleeps in abandoned places and caves, looking for his wife and child. You mean he lost his wits? That means mad? More or less. No, he loses his memory. I met him. I don't think he's mad. He's not mad. He's got kind eyes. Haunted. Still, I think it's best if you keep your distance, Vicky. You never know. I do know. He wouldn't harm anyone. Jenny's right, Vicky. But what if father had lost his memory? And no one helped him. What if everyone kept their distance and didn't care? What would become of him? It's called the Boer War. The Boers are the Africans? <laughs> no, the Boers are the Dutch. And they're fighting the Africans? No. They're fighting the British. Us. But what do the Africans say about it? It's their country. Mm. Yes, well, um, perhaps it's a little complicated for you at the moment, Vicky, when you're a little older. Hmm. 
Um, that man you met yesterday, his mind is twisted with grief. He could hurt you. No. He's the one that's been hurt. He wouldn't hurt anybody else. Emily? No, Vicky. The girl from yesterday. I've come back to see if you need anything. I have all I need. like when somebody dies. My mother died two years ago. Now my father's gone missing. But you must try and live as best you can and be happy. It's what they would want. me and I love her. As time goes by the hurt gets less.
old horses hate fire, but please, you must help me. Denning. My wife and daughter, they... They died in a fire. Emily was about your age. They're with God now. Of course they are. Dr. Gordon will fix your head. You can ride on beauty. One day, your luck is going to run out, young lady. He just wanted someone to talk to. Well, Miss Lovett says he's as mad as a hatter. Miss Lovett? She can't talk. Vicky. Well, gentlemen, dear, I'm afraid my diagnosis agrees with Vicky's. Mr. Saunders is lucid and seems to have accepted the death of his family quite rationally. Apart from a nasty bump on the head, he's as fit as a flea. But everyone I've spoken to say that he's lost his reason. Well, perhaps he had. I've seen a case like this once before. See, sometimes a sharp bang on the head can restore a person's reason. The human mind is... Something we know very little about at the moment, I'm afraid. Well, it seems your intuition was correct. This time. He'll be up and about in a day or two. He just wanted a bit of looking after. Vicky, I do hope you haven't tired of bringing home injured animals and branched out into people as well. Well, you're improving. No footprints, webbed or otherwise. And it's practically dry. <laughs> However, this smells as if it's been dragged through a bushfire. It was a fire in a shed. Well, I hope Mr Ronald Bond of Sydney doesn't mind his parcel smoked. The best thing for that is lavender. Lavender? Mm, that's right, dear. You mean just tear open the King's Mail and... Pop in some lavender. Well, you can do it that way. Or you can soak the string in lavender water and retie it. Really? Hmm. I'll do it if you like. Goodbye. Mr. Burton? Goodbye. But. Goodbye. But. I can't find anything among his papers. Well, down here, we don't put a lot of store by things in writing. We trust each other with a handshake. It might be different in England, I don't know. Look, if you could just give me a little time to make some inquiries. Inquiries? <laughs> That's just great, isn't it? Now you're calling me a liar. No, no, it's just that I need to look through... Yes, you papers. are. I'm telling you that I paid for the fencing and you're doubting my word. Maybe I was a fool to trust your husband. Maybe he was a liar. Are you talking about the fence that I put up, Mr Coates? Hey? Because it was Mr Denning who paid for that. I remember because he gave me half a crown extra for Christmas. As well as payment for the fence. Are you sure? I'll go and check my books.
Thank you, Mr. Saunders. They're very handsome. You've made an extremely quick recovery, Mr. Saunders. I've got your daughter to thank for that, Mrs. Denning. I didn't do much. It's what you said that counted. What did she say? Well, she was talking about you. I'd only ever thought about the past and what I'd lost. Vicky showed me that there is a future, as long as you don't give up hope. That's right. We must never give up hope. I'd like to keep them, Vicky. They'll be good company. <laughs> uh, I'll call one black and one beauty, uh, if you don't mind. Oh, of course not. Well, uh, I'll be on my way. Thanks for your hospitality, Mrs. Denning. And thank you, young lady. I was finished until you came along. Oh, beauty did all the work. But you saved me from something worse than fire. Much worse. Bye. Bye.